So we've been working on uh, torsion problems uh, on shafts, and here we have just a, a slight twist to the problems that we've been looking at right now in that we, we're adding one extra step and that we have to do a power conversion because we know there's a relationship between uh, the power, uh, either pulled off at a pulley or, or provided by a motor, and the angular uh, rate of rotation, uh, that the shaft is turning. And so really there's not much difference uh, to the torsion problem itself as a torsion problem other than that one additional step that we're going to have to do a, a bit of a conversion in order to get to the torques. And, and so let's get started. And so I've set myself up for a free body diagram because we have a motor which is going to be providing power, uh, if you will, to the shaft, turning the shaft, and it does that by providing a torque or applying a torque. And then uh, at the pulley that we see, we're going to have a, a drag force as it takes power away, and th that's going to be in the form of a torque. So we need to do our free body diagram. So we know that the motor is going to be applying a torque. So we'll just label that. And then the idler wheel, you know, because this has to be in equilibrium, needs to be drawing, if you will, counterbalancing that with the same torque. And so really what we need to do is figure out what the torque is at the motor. That will tell us what the torque is at the idler. That solves the torque between the idler wheel and the motor. And then we can size the shaft to, so that we don't exceed the allowable stress of 30 megapascals. So let's get on about it. So this is the extra step then. So we want to talk about the power at the motor. And before we can do that, we need to know what the angular rate of rota rotation is uh, because it's given an RPM, 175 RPM as a frequency. And so we need to take that 175, and that's revolutions per minute. And we have to multiply that by two pi radians per revolution. And one minute per 60 seconds. And we end up knowing that our rate of rotation is 18.33 radians per second. So now we can apply our uh, formula to determine the torque. And so we know that torque is related to both power and angular rate of rotation. So it's T equals P over omega. And so we can plug in our values. So we know that the power being provided is 3,500 watts at 18.33 radians per second. So that the torque being provided is 190.94 Newton meters. So that allows us to figure out what the torque is. And now, quite frankly, we're right back into our comfort zone, which is mechanics and materials. And we can size this shaft to restrict the uh, allowable stress to 30 megapascal. So let me just write in these. Uh, what did we say it was? 190.94 Newton meters. This is the same. And then we can look at the shear stress due to torsion. And so in this case, we know our formula for tau max is our torque. And that's the internal torque, which in this case is 190.94 Newton meters. Uh, times the radius of the shaft divided by the polar moment of inertia of the shaft. And we have the polar moment of inertia for a shaft. 
is equal to pi over 2 times its radius to the fourth. And so if we combine these algebraically, we can determine that our tau max is equal to 2 times the torque divided by pi times the radius cubed. So then if we want to set tau max equal to our tau allowable, so we don't exceed our tau allowable, uh, we can rearrange this to be C is equal to the cubed root of 2 times the torque divided by pi times tau allowable. And so we can plug in our numbers because we have everything we need. So it's 2 times our 190.94 Newton meters all divided by pi times tau allowable, which is our 30 megapascals or 30 times 10, sorry, 10 to the 6 pascals. We get a value of 0 0.0159 meters or 15.9 millimeters. And of course, we need to round that off to the nearest millimeter. And to be conservative, it has to round up. Otherwise, we're going to exceed uh, the limit that we calculated. And so that's approximately equal to 16 millimeters. Remembering that's a radius. Um, not a diameter uh, for conservative. And I said, therefore, as the question asks for a diameter, basically we're going to say use a 32 millimeter diameter shaft. And that's it. So we introduced the wrinkle by talking about power rather than torques. And so the only extra step that that caused us was to have to take our power and convert it to a torque based on the angular rate of rotation uh, and the power that was being drawn. And once we had our torque, it was a simple application of our uh, shear stress due to uh, torque formula. And we were able to derive this down and come up with our solution. Uh, to meet our tau allowable. Okay, so that's uh, a, a couple uh, problems that we've done now on uh, shear stress uh, resulting from torsion. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and look at um, uh, calculating the angle of twist or the deformation resulting from the torsion. And then we're going to finally close out torsion by looking at some statically indeterminate uh, torsion problems. So uh, hopefully I'll leave a link here to the next one where we start looking at angle of twist and I uh, hope to see you there.